Yeah. So okay. genetically, you can tell the difference between an African and an African American, right? Yeah, you can. Easily, right? Yeah. Thank you. Anybody can. Anybody can explain that. Out. I don't think African American can tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas is dumb. <laughs> I see, see Africans right here. Oh, he walked away. He walked away because he could tell the difference quick. Oh, I can tell the Africans. Bam. But anyway, yeah. Africans the same people. Huh? No. How do you know they're not the same people? Here. Yeah, I'm just talking. Uh, it's from. Yeah, it's from. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, bro. They were already here. How did anybody get here? Hundred years later. The Negro has still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Self in exile in his own land. In his own land. Because as we know, if in 1963, all of us, all our elders knew that they were Indian. The question is, why didn't they tell the generations after that what their birthright was? People call themselves African Americans. You're not African. You're Black American. Let common sense dictate to you. Common sense thing number one. You look at the movie Roots, and that started that whole snowball effect of trace your roots back to Africa. Okay, you look at all these documentaries that they talk about slavery. You know it's one thing that you won't see from all of the stories that are told in those documentaries about slavery? None of the stories that are told tell anything as of when we came from Africa, the boat ride over, or anything prior to actually being sold. Nothing is said. There's no verbal evidence that has ever been stated about that. Minus the movie Roots, which, I mean, that was a lie anyway, that TV series. Alex Haley, he plagiarized that off something else it came out later on and that was after they made Roots Part 2 but anyway um, <clears throat> you have to look just try to look at things logically okay now if you look at this photo this is how slaves were supposed to have been shipped over if you've got people laying in one position for months, a human will die. Humans need motion. You know, we don't, our heart pumps, it pumps the blood, but it doesn't pump like all the fluids through our body, okay? We need to move around for our fluids and stuff to circulate, you know, that or we will die. It's, it's, it's common sense, okay, and medical fact. Another thing. I don't know how many of you all had to uh, care for a family member that was bedridden, but did you all not have to move the person around in order for all of their fluids to continue moving? Or they would get like bed sores and all, all sorts of things would happen to them, right? Now, if it's someone that's in a coma and they're in a coma for an extended period of time, what happens? The ligaments shorten from lack of use. So then when they do have to walk, they can't. 
they have to relearn walking and their physical motions and all of that. Okay. Now, when you take all of that into account and you take the story and the photos or drawings of how this slave transportation method happened, wouldn't that tell a reasonably intelligent person somebody is lying somewhere? Anytime you're in business and you're going to sell an item, an item costs X amount of dollars and you have to sell it for X amount of dollars to turn a profit. Now, examine this so-called slave transportation trade business. Number one, you need a ship. That costs money. Number two, you need a crew to run the ship. That costs money. Number three, you need to provide sustenance for the crew to and from. So the journey to and from could possibly take a year. <clears throat> so you have to have at least a six month supply of food and water to go one way and a six month supply to come back. Okay. And you have to come back with all this cargo. Now, can a human being be chained up in a small area, just a small area, unable to move for all those months, no food, no water, and live? They can't. If you put someone in a small confined space like that for a long period of time they are going to go through some type of psychotic episode because we as human beings are not used to being in a caged environment like that I mean, you got solitary confinement but in solitary confinement there is enough room for the inmate to move about and walk about and they get some interaction of some sort with other people. Now, imagine if you take an inmate, solitary confinement, death row, all they have is the space on their bed and above their head. That's it. And they're chained right there and they can't move. They're going to die. Real simple. So, some of you all talking about all this, oh, bond with Africa, and uh, you know, you, you, you may want to examine the facts. And one thing that, I'm, I'm going to end the video with this. I'm going to end it with this here. I've been to a couple of countries, and I've worked with different groups of people from Africa, different countries in Africa. <clears throat> and in the course of us working together and talking and you know, about our cultural differences, things we like, talking about home, who we miss, and all that other stuff. Slavery comes up in the conversation. So I asked a simple question, and I got a simple answer for it. And this is from all of them. This wasn't just one or two people from. This is from people of every region that I had talked to. And I asked them, I said, uh, was there any like verbal history told in Africa as of slavery and the people getting stolen and or sold off or whatever and sent, sent away to America? And they said no. I'm like, okay, well, how did you learn about slavery? They said in school. Yeah, in school taught by Westerners. So, with that alone being said, I'm expected to believe that this whole slavery thing happened, the transportation aspect of it, when no one that I met from Africa confirmed that. But they do confirm that they learned about it in school. Take this one with you. Now, say for instance, just for a talking point, say that Martin Luther King was African 
He came from Africa to America. He was killed in America. Right? This story was taught in Africa as of we had one of our guys and he went to America, tried to free his people, and he was shot and killed. Okay. Then say time goes by and Africans start coming to America voluntarily and you know we're talking conversation right and one says or asks what what was the deal with Martin Luther King and it's like oh yeah you know he was he was shot he was he was uh, he was killed he was assassinated okay if that same person would ask you did you learn that through stories that were told over time through history here in America or did you learn that in school and the American tells the African oh I was taught that in school from an African teacher don't that make you kind of make a light go off kind of make you think wait a minute wait somebody lying someplace because if something happened and you've been taught that this thing happened and it started from one country but people in that country don't know anything about it except from what they're being taught by people from the country that said it happened that just don't gel right with me but that's it for this video I'm you know, this is just mind-boggling, just a lot of these confused people here in America, all this bond with your African brother and all this other stuff, and it's like, you are from here. You are from here. It's like me beating a dead horse, telling people, you are from right here. 